guys? Joe Abercrombie here with Joey Ford, the professor David Gordon. We're here at uh, Davis Gym, Picayune, Mississippi, Team Jucal. Grace, Grace United, yeah, Grace Team United. Jucal. Uh, 107 <laughs> Highway 11 South, Picayune, Mississippi. Thank you, David, for letting us use your gym for the podcast. Thank you, bro. Before we get too deep into it, I want to thank a couple of sponsors. La Bruza Fabrication, uh, Coastal Containers. Thank you guys for uh, letting us do what we do. Have some fun. So, um, Joey, we got together. Yep. Coming in, doing a while. podcast. Yeah, it's been a little been a while, while since we've been on the social media front. Again, thank you, David, for letting us use thank your you, gym for this. I want to talk to David, man. He's coming off a huge win on our last show, May 13th. Uh, the whole show from top to bottom was great. But these guys, himself and uh, his opponent, Ben Bluen, another tough kid coming out of New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, had put on a great fight and ended up getting fight of the night. How do you feel about your win? Man, I feel great. Um, it was a big test. It was a big test. I figured I could go out and it'd be a dominant performance, but the dude's just like such a hard-nosed, gritty dude. And um, solid all-round fighter, pretty good striker. He's got some power in his hands, good cardio, and uh, really good grappling. I was just able to like kind of just show where I'm at, where the level I'm at. And uh, main thing is like just kind of show like how I could be calm, mentally strong in there. And uh, just be professional. That's the main thing. That's hey. that's kind of how I wanted it to look. I wanted I wanted to look like an assassin in there, so hey, I didn't make uh, it look like. It that. definitely you, looked good for yeah, sure. You did just that, man. You came in a ring. You were filling the crowd. Had a bunch of people from picking you and come out uh, to support you. A bunch of your guys come out yeah. support you. I think uh, we was. I would say it probably half and half on the crowd. I mean, I, yeah. You had a big crew come out to support you, so that's awesome. But you were filling the crowd, real relaxed. Uh, was able to really showcase your striking. I mm -hmm. think. And you're controlling the ground. Your jujitsu is top notch. Yeah, man. I really thank you, man. With your top uh, jujitsu. Uh, and again, like can't take nothing away from Ben Bluen. I mean, he's a tough, durable guy. You're able to get the finish. Yeah. I think in the third round, uh, get the TKO. Finish. Yeah, yeah. Ground and pound. Um, you know, that's one. That's one of the things that's impressive watching you is most fighters are good at standing up, good on the ground. But David, you use every tool that you have to your advantage. Yeah. And if you're not dominating in one area, you go to the next. And it's just impressive to see. Not too many fighters do that now. Absolutely. What I've talked about for years that impresses me about David, and David's a humble guy. I know he feels weird. We're sitting here That's just complimenting. Funny. But, um, you know, the way that you're able to use your length. You know, a oh, lot yeah. of tall guys, yeah. you're a tall, rangy guy, but you actually use your your link to your advantage. So you, yeah. you, you, a lot of straight punches, and you know, just slipping right off the side, throwing your straight punches. It's really, You look really sharp in there, so I was really impressed with your performance. Yeah, I, I spar with way too many heavy hitters to yeah. not be able to use right. my reach. Absolutely. Like, I, I got Seth Gage, Kurt Hallabaugh, I got uh, Caleb Lee, he cracked so hard, actually. He, he barely even tries to touch you in sparring, like, he, he rocks you. I don't, I don't know what he's got in his hands and his legs, but yeah, yeah. So I, I got to keep that distance. Yeah, I got to keep that distance. Chris Pham helping out. Huh? Yes, a hundred percent. Dog man, I love 100%. Chris Pham. Yeah, great so shout guy. Shout out to Chris. Uh, what's the name of his gym? Victory. Victory MMA. MMA. In Lacombe. Yeah, in Lacombe, right next to the Lishmans. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So I know a lot of you guys go down and get mm -hmm. some cross training in with Chris. Uh, he's a great guy, a great coach, great mm -hmm. boxing coach. So, uh, dude, he's got fighters from like four or five different gyms and teams and they're all just working together under one roof here and there and uh get a different it's good because you all you get a different look of people yeah, you know right, different good. bodies different styles good. yeah that's what i uh i've been impressed and i think we talked about it a little bit before your last fight you know we we're kind of doing some interviews and talking and stuff um you know me and you come from the same area mm -hmm. i mean obviously we're a different age span you know mm -hmm. I'm, I'm quite a few years older than you but we went we graduated at the same high school yeah you know I didn't know about you until you started fighting. You didn't really know about me until mm -hmm. I started fighting, you know. Uh, so it's kind of cool to see, you know, I was kind of part of, like, I guess the older generation of fighters yeah. that was coming through this area. Myself, uh, my brother, Gary Hancock, Derek Arsman, Ryan Gaucher, mm. uh, John Trahan, a lot, Keith Snyder, a lot of great fighters that's coming from this Picayune or Purvis mm -hmm. County area. And to see right. you guys repping it, man, you guys are, are doing an extraordinary job with yourself, Gage Gill, Troy, Trey Wimbro. Uh, Seth and Lawson Dardar, mm -hmm. you guys are really uh, repping the flag here in Perver County, man. Yeah, man. A lot of impressive guys for sure. I, I think it goes down to like, it's blue collar families and everything. Like, I mean, every everyone's family has even even if someone's like well well together now, dude. Like a couple generations ago, everyone around here, their grandparents struggled like mm -hmm. bad. So. Uh, I think it's just that work ethic that's kind of been put into us all. So we all work hard. Totally and at this right. point, now everyone uses their brains. We got cell phones and the internet, and we see how every other team is able to work and, and do stuff. So 
you got to learn from all over. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's the work ethic. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. Uh, <coughs> just a hardworking bunch around this area, like mm -hmm. you said. Uh, and it was cool because at one point, there wasn't a single gym here in Picayune. You know, no. like in, and when we were training in Slidell at uh, Gold Dragon there at the uh, older location, the majority of fighters that was dry, that was coming to Slidell and training were from Picayune. You know, we would have five, six, seven guys that would carpool to Picayune or Slidell and train at a time. You mm -hmm. know, and now we got you. You opened up your gym, what, three, mm -hmm. four years ago, I believe? Five. Five uh, years ago. It'll be so. five. It might be six. It might be six coming in on uh, August. So, so that's yeah. awesome. So six that's years, awesome. uh, yeah. you know, running your uh, business here successfully in Picayune. Feeling um, old, dude. <laughs> that, feeling old. Come on, man. <laughs> I opened that thing when I was 21, man. I'm, a, I'm about to, I'm, you know, I'm getting close to 30 now. Right. Lawrence Patrick, he was able to uh, make the move down here to Picayune. He ended up building a house out there kind of by me. Uh, so he kind of wanted to settle down and retire here in this area because he likes it. Dude, it's a great place uh, to live. It's a beautiful place to live. So uh, <laughs> so what, what do you plan on doing? I mean, what do you got in store? You got anything coming up? Any fights? Anything? Man, just get more. Really, the main thing is make more walks in the cage. Make yep. more walks in the cage. Get more experience. I fought a lot of different dudes in in the amateur level. I fought a different, a lot of different type of style of guys, body types, all that. So I think that's what the professional career is about too. It's about pretty much redoing that and uh, continuing to fight better and better guys. There's a lot of good guys coming up. Like look at the look at the featherweight division. Um, Cool, you got. I mean, obviously, you got Tyler Hill. Y'all yep. mentioned him before. Um, that's a fight that's going to happen eventually, whether we fight sooner or later. Eventually, like to know who Top Dog is in the right, featherweight right. division. If we keep on winning, that's the fight. Well, right? that's 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 where I'm at. I want to see uh, you win another <laughs> fight, Tyler win another fight, mm -hmm. Hitman. Uh, and then we want to put that fight on. Now, I don't know if Tyler wants to, but hey, yeah. we, we want to pay and make this fight happen uh, for the 145 title mm -hmm. uh, for Savage Fights. Uh, it seems like he's kind of stepping out and, uh, you know, jumping into the fight game full blast. Oh, yeah. Um, I didn't really do a lot of research on him before or anything like that. I watched him fight one time live. Watched him recently whenever Gage fought uh, for the CWC card. Looked like he did well. Fought a smaller guy, not such a good record, but it was his debut. Um, yeah, that 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 would be a fun one eventually, and uh, great striker, really good striker. Um, I imagine they wouldn't take the fight because of the grappling difference, but uh, y'all want to see me strike him, right? Y'all want to see me I mean, strike with him? I'll, I'll, I'll strike with him. Joey I'll strike with him. Sure. I mean, no, you know, I want to see. Yeah, dude. Him, What's cool about it is uh, both yeah. you guys are completely undefeated in MMA mm -hmm. throughout y'all's amateur and amateur pro and pro career, uh, careers. Mm -hmm. I think you were six and zero as an amateur, now two and zero as a pro. Something like yeah. that. I thought th th Tyler Hill, he's a five and zero as an amateur, and now he's one and zero as a pro. pro. So, like you said, I, I think it would be the fight to determine who is the top dog in this area yeah. at, the, at the featherweight division. So I, I would like to see see both of them fight one more time, get one more win. Yeah, and, and let's uh, let's see what we can do. Let's... I think that's the one that excites me most, honestly. Um, but there's other there's other guys. I mean, look out. What are what are the other featherweights now? You got obviously Ben already. I already fought Ben. Um, we're going to train together sometimes because that's what it all goes down to. You fight the dudes and you get better. Right, you get right. better together. Oh, yeah. Um, as long as you're cool. He's cool. Yeah. You know, sometimes there's personality clashes. Right. Some dudes, you can't even put them in a room together and they're just going to get after it. So right. oh, yeah. you never know what it's going to be like until you get them together and then after the fact. Yeah. So back, just to backtrack a little bit, you talked about Gage Gill. He's coming off a big win this past <laughs> weekend at yeah, the yeah, CBC one, card of our tough Tyler Listy. Uh, got the TKO finish or knockout <sighs> finish? It was a knockout. I mean, knockout. he 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 dropped, and then Gage just jumped on him. It was uh, what round was that in? First, first round. round. That's awesome. Man, I was so like, great I was sitting Gage there. Gale. I'm I'm Cage side. I've I've cornered him since his first fight. Um, I met Gage on like, I went in. My boy Matt Stock. He's always in my corner yeah. as well. He was like, Hey, can you uh come in and corner this kid, Gage? I was like, Yeah, sure. It was his first amateur fight, and uh, I've worked with him since then. And he's always wanted me in his corner, Gage, and I was. Gage from this area too, right? No, he's from Lutcher. Okay, for some reason I thought he was from this area. He so his family, my mate, my mom's maiden name is Gill too. Okay. So we're actually distantly, distantly related because yeah. his family's from Bush, our family's from that area too. Then, but his people moved to Bogalusa, so mine moved to McNeil. Okay. So we're you. actually distantly related. Okay. We didn't even know that until kind of recently. I got you. Yeah, but um, no, nah, man, I was looking at the timer. In the middle of the round, and uh, I was like, dude, da the damage is 
really starting to add up. And I looked down, there wasn't even a minute into the fight. I was like, this is an assault. Yeah, I wasn't able to see I a video. I was surprised. I, seen, I was surprised too. Tyler's Bro, tough, he's tough. Yeah, he's I, tough. I thought that had been Gage's toughest opponent. Gage is sharp, man. He's uh, developing. Yeah. I think that moved him to what, 3-0 as a pro now? He's 5-0. 5-0. 5-0, oh. all finishes. Okay. Yeah. I apologize, all finishes. Gage, for not getting your record right. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I knew you were undefeated. But a very impressive uh, start for his professional career. Yeah. In a lot of fights in a small uh, span, you know, he's able to knock out a lot of fights. Like I guess I'm surprised mm-hmm. it's five and zero because it seems like it was just a few months ago he was making his pro debut. So congrats again on that win. Yeah. Uh, and he was a lot of people don't. He was fighting hurt in some of those fights. Right? He was fighting hurt in some of those fights, and uh, you wouldn't be able to tell that dude's like. I don't know if he's if his mental is really strong. Or if he's just really stupid, but either way, it works out really well for him. I, I mean, the, dude, whatever, the dude's mental. Yeah. Whatever it is, whatever happens, it works. I think, well. uh, you know, I've always said anybody that has the nerve and uh, I guess guts and determination to get in a cage and fist fight somebody, mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta have a little mental toughness to yourself. You know, I mean, yeah. you gotta you gotta really believe in yourself to put yourself out there in front of a a, a crowd in, yeah. a, in a lock cage or a ring and try to. Put hands on somebody else yeah. before they put hands on you. I mean, yeah. that, that takes a lot. To He's do a stuff. lifelong competitor. Uh, baseball, swam, powerlifting, got into MMA. All through that, he was a diabetic. So, really? That, that's something else he's had to deal with, too, was yeah. diabetes during all that. So, you know, we're getting ready for a fist fight, and this dude's over like, where's my Checking banana? I got I got to make Where's my banana? Where's my that's orange? Awesome. Where's my he insulin? Always, uh, he always but, shows uh, up in incredible shape. He's always shredded to the to the stone, man. He always looks good. So, dude. Uh, definitely looks the part. Um, he don't even lift weights. Really? No. Nah. Sometimes just that natural physique, right? Yeah. He, he used to, obviously, for powerlifting, but yeah. he, doesn't, he doesn't even touch a weight. We talked about his uh, high school background, and that's something that we've talked about in interviews with other coaches and other uh, fighters is you see a lot of guys, once they get out of high school, Mm -hmm. looking or or maybe like uh, college or whatever, just looking for that competitive edge or looking for something else to kind of transfer that that competitive drive to. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of of former athletes getting into the sport of MMA or getting into like jujitsu, just just as something just to kind of knock off that competitive edge that they Mm -hmm. have. So that's kind of cool to see him uh, keep kind of pushing through competition oh, yeah. and, and, and excelling. Stay so. active. That, seem, that seems to be what it is. Like um, football players especially because they just, Contact. they go hard, yes. bro. Contact. They go hard, obviously. it's uh, Football's a rough sport. And you have to be a giant to be successful in football. Like, or Trey, we mm-hmm. were just talking about him, Trey Wimbro. I mean, dudes, I don't know. He'll walk around anywhere between like high 130s to 140 something. That guy can't be a collegiate football player. He'll get hurt. Like it's just it's just facts. But in MMA, like dude stands he's, yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. He's got weight yeah. classes. Yeah. You know he's a great athlete. Yeah. Like I said, he he, he moves well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that just that 140, it might not transition on the football field, but it's going to transition yeah. in that cage because he, he's going to be mm-hmm. matched up with somebody his own size. Yeah, but it takes a lot of discipline too. You got to cut that weight. You got to make sure you're making weight. I mean, look at Dardar. That dude walks around heavy and then cuts down to 135. Yep. You know. Uh, yeah, and- I almost don't even want to say what he gets up to, but he gets up higher than me. <laughs> I walk around like about a buck 65, and he might be scratching that sometimes he's, he's got, got his weight old, down he's now got a big, big old thighs, yeah so that's what i was gonna say he's of... got a big build like in his lower body yeah. he's got really big legs which complements his style of mm-hmm. like uh, heavy leg kicks yeah you know with uh explosive like in and out mm-hmm. movement exciting um, to watch yeah sure. it's super exciting to watch so yeah. a bunch of great guys coming mm-hmm. from this area and uh it's kind of cool that you guys are kind of repping and and it's like they all kind of flock to almost to adhere to you, you know, and yeah. kind of like uh, they enjoy your guidance. They enjoy it. It's almost like you're the team leader or the team captain of this area, man. Something like that. It's it's what it seems like sometimes, but it just, I've just been doing this and it's just how things fall yeah. into it. I, I've really enjoyed it. Main thing is uh, I think I'm just good with personality types because I understand that like if I talk to Joey and I talk to you and I'm coaching both of you guys, what gets you up is going to not get him up. Same thing, like, it's it's just everyone's different, mm-hmm, you right. know? There's different ways of motivating somebody, and, like, everyone has their own demons they face. So, like, some people's demons, like, I I got to know, yep. you know? Like, like where where's your mindset at? Because uh, I'll sit and talk to whoever. Like, well, as a gym owner or, or, or coach, whatever, yeah. like, you're in a position of leadership. Absolutely. And how many times have you been on that phone, and how many times have you stayed on those mats, hours 
after. Just talking about Dude. personal stuff. And your coaches have been doing the same for you. Like, yeah. we all go through exactly, stuff. Yeah. And that's what makes the bond tight. You're exactly right. right. Yeah, You're exactly because right. whenever we're, I'm in that cage, I don't have to worry if my coaches got me. I already know they got yeah. me. Yeah. And I'm right. So I'm gonna. That's kind of brings me to the next question that I kind of wanted to ask you. And and I kind of know too. I've talked about it several times. Is like the difference between like coaching adults and coaching youth. Um, you know, I think, and, and you kind of hit the nail on the head. You got to teach. You got to kind of teach them all mm -hmm. as individuals because yep. they all got different personalities. You know, like I coach mm -hmm. a lot of youth sports, um, but I also, you know, I teach a lot of things in the fire service. So I'm I'm used to working with grown adults as well. You know, right. and, and coaching jujitsu, coaching MMA. You know. Sometimes it's like well, teaching grown babies too. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the yeah. Men get their feelings hurt too, and then it's they just they just make bigger noise. That's right. what it is. Right. And, yeah. Uh, so how uh, how's how's your youth program going on here at uh, Team Juca? Man, it's doing like pretty good. The program. It's doing pretty good. Summer's just let out recently, so um, people are inconsistent at times. But man, we we've had a really nice sized group in here recently, and same thing in our our gym and slide L really big groups. It's been hot though. Yeah. Have These about, kids have been working. They've been working awesome. in the heat, Broy. Have y'all thought about doing any kind of summer camps or something throughout the summer just kind of keep the kids busy? Yeah, I would like to. I would like to for sure. Um, that's something I kind of, I've planned for years, but every time during the summer, it's always like a busy one cornering coach and maybe have a fight of my own but yeah i would like to get a summer camp in i think that's a great idea because you know like during the summer the kids are out and like they mm -hmm. get bored i know mine over there he's sitting over there on the side he gets bored and mm -hmm. i come home in the evenings from work sometimes after he's been home all day there's no telling what he's gotten into throughout <laughs> yeah. the day, you know? so to have somewhere where he can come and just kind of let right. loose and you know uh and also energy. train and, and be, have some structure mm -hmm. you know i think you know coming into this gym the, the youth they have structure there um, you know, we talked uh, earlier, we were talking about Cody Cathy, one of our buddies, oh, yeah. he uh, coaches uh, wrestling here at Picayune High School. He's talking about doing some summer camps, some wrestling camps throughout the summer for the uh, youth at Gold Dragon, you know. And, uh, Dude, it makes you so practice. much better as a coach, I too. He does something. I, I know my kids go over there, mm -hmm. and then, uh, well, Malachi does, and uh, I'll fix and start going over there doing some private lessons mm -hmm. with him and all. It helps, bro. Like, I just don't like the whole wrestling, and but I'm I'm starting to enjoy it. I'm dude, it's such it. pain. Like I I love wrestling, but it definitely is like it's a love hate relationship. Yes. Whenever you do it, man, it's a good. <clears throat> I, I love it though. I like that uh physical exhaustion point. Yeah, oh yeah, right, right. there's I, nothing like it. I like that push, and, and I always had like a wrestling heavy uh, base. I think mm -hmm. um, as I was fighting. And I still, you know, I still in my mind. And I never that wrestled. That's the big thing. Oh, yeah. You never actually wrestled. You don't need to actually be a high school wrestler. Absolutely. Like, and that's something else. You that's just got to make it work in MMA. That's something else that's kind of cool. Like, you see how many scrappy guys we have in this area. Like, we literally just got wrestling in Perver County last year. And one of the high schools, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. one out of the three high schools in Perver County actually has wrestling in Picayune. Uh, could you imagine if they would have had wrestling? Throughout, you know, the yeah, last 10, in, 15, yeah. 20 years of, of uh, Perver County High School. And I just named off probably about 10 guys that went to high school here in Perver County. That would have wrestled. That would have wrestled. And but would have been standouts. Yeah. You know, Trey Wimbro, if that dude would have wrestled, man. Absolutely. And uh, I've got this kid, AJ. AJ Colaprath. Absolute dog. He's uh, He's been wrestling the past year. He's been trained with us. He's already had two smoker fights. He's 16, 17 years old. So you're basically um, just counting down the days till he turns 18, huh? We had a dude. He's one of my main trainer partners. He helped me for Ben like just just as much as any of the other guys. That's awesome, and man. we're getting after it. He's tough as nails. He did the Murph and he came and trained right after that. Like that's insane. He's down for it, bro. Oh, uh, he's he's a savage. He's one of those kids. I'm like, you need to stay home today. Yeah. You need to stay home. Go to, and get your rest. Don't overtrain yourself. To be 17 or 18 again. I'm really telling you, bro. Time. I'm telling you. I get out of bed. I feel like I hurt myself. Well, that's what I was gonna talk about uh, grinding out in the wrestling. You know, even though years and years of just like pushing hard with a, a heavy wrestling style of fighting. Yeah, man. If I go in a wrestling class now, man, I can't turn yeah. my neck for a week. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I can't. I'm merging on the interstate. I'm like. Oh, I know that. Crash. I can't even turn my head because my neck's so stiff. So yep. it's kind of cool. So we talked about the, uh, your youth program you got going on here. Um, I love working with them, though. I, I wanted yeah. to say that. I, I love working with kids. the kids. Like, Because uh, a lot of people that are in the fight game, they see what I'm doing with the fighters. But I really like working with the kids. That's like the main reason why I started doing this, actually. Yeah. Um, um, I really enjoy it. And uh, it makes me a better person, makes me a better fighter, too. Because uh, if I could teach a kid, a lot of times I teach kids. 
kids the same kind of similar concepts I teach in adults. So if I can make those dumb down to where the kids can learn it, can man, I can, I can definitely teach adults. And sometimes right. I have to teach adults just how I teach kids because simple wins. I always use an right. example. Of, you know, I talked about just, and this is just talking about personalities and coaching different things. Uh, you know, I teach like rope rescue in the fire service. You know, we mm -hmm. do all kinds of different types of uh, rescue in the fire service. And uh, one day we were just at board at the house and, and I just rigged up some ropes in a tree. And I taught my, uh, at that mm -hmm. time, he was like seven or eight. I taught him how to climb rope and awesome. then come back down, you know? And I, I go to these rope classes and I have grown adults complaining about not understanding how to do it. I'm like, look, man, I, I literally taught my seven year old <laughs> how to do this in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's really not that bad. You know, mm -hmm. you could do this, you know, you just gotta. And so it's just kind of, I use it as a joke or an example to kind of like tell mm -hmm. people like, look, man, it, a seven year old can do this. Yeah. You know, right. so it's kind of cool that you say that if you, if you could dumb it down to the point of a, a seven or eight year old being able to understand that technique and the steps it takes to get to that finish, then uh, an adult should have no problem or you should have no problem teaching an adult mm -hmm. that same technique. So it's kind of cool to- It's because to of their own point. experiences why they don't learn it well. Yes. Height, fears, all kinds of stuff like that. Whenever realistically, you know, how you learn anything is how you learn everything. Yeah. So if you just think about it, I'm just learning something new rather than what am I actually learning? Don't worry about what I'm actually learning, just do it. Right. Yeah. Just do it. It's cool. Overthinking is the worst thing you could do. We get older anything. and start making all kinds of excuses why yeah. we don't want to do it instead. Of, <laughs> it's we, because we, of our we started trying to find our way out of it. A hundred percent. I think sometimes it. as older people, now we can think about like, man, this is going to hurt me. Maybe this might hurt me. Experience. Hurt but yes. as kids, you're just like, ah, I yes. don't care. Let's just get it. So. Mm -hmm. yep. But we talked about the youth program that David has here. You talked about Malachi being in it. And that's something oh, yeah. that you uh, we've been talking about here lately. So Joey's talking about uh, doing some uh some tournaments doing mm -hmm. some uh youth tournaments some sub tournaments and having like a little format you want to talk about that yeah so i mean man as always we've been super blessed and able to get a lot of uh feedback and some people wanting to us to do more and we kind of teamed up with david and uh cody and uh, a few other guys and uh i think in the september hopefully lord willing y'all have some stuff in order yeah. uh we're looking to start these tournaments and uh kind of kind of looking at it a different way i mean uh me and david talked about it some mm -hmm. But uh, to where we put on these tournaments, uh, they all come in and it's like a season thing. At the end of the year, you may be the champion of the, you know, of the mm -hmm. tournament, but you'll go in, the two top uh, guys will go in and actually have a jujitsu tournament in the cage, lights, music, everything like a regular fight. Mm -hmm. um, but you got to work your way to get there, you know, and then uh, we ain't worked out all the details, obviously, but uh, it's huge and I'm super excited about yeah. it. Um, it just a lot of times we go to these these tournaments that come here. They're just not well. As, I mean, to me personally, I mean, David's been there with mm. us, uh, coaching and uh, cornering uh, Malachi and the kids, and they're just not. Um, it's always different. They're never yeah. organized like you know, or they they got kids mismatched and everything else, and even some of these super fights, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm excited to see where the <laughs> Lord takes it and what we can do with it. But I'm also excited about uh, the guys that we got that are getting involved. David, Cody, you, yeah. you know, Josh, and a few other guys um, working out the details with the rules and how it's going to go. But I mean, I'm super excited about it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. We always, uh, I don't know if you know, but we always mess with Joey because Joey's a boxer. You know, he comes from a boxing background. So, you know, we always mess with him about like the jujitsu. Mm -hmm. Like, oh man, well, I don't like that jujitsu. I don't like that wrestling stuff, you know. So, Dude, now, we now we're bringing Joey I mean, to the dark side. Uh, Joey's uh, coming over to the dark side. I mean, I, look, man, my kids love it, you know, and it's one of them things I grew up, you know, young boxing and stuff like that. And, and I look at it like this I don't want my kids boxing to start with. I want yeah. them to learn, like, and we've talked about it before. My <clears throat> MMA record isn't as good, you know, when you look at my boxing record. Well, the thing about it is I haven't lost a boxing match, but you lose MMA because it's two different worlds. Yeah. If you're constantly worried about being taken down, you're not going to let your hands go. And for me, it's not knowing anything on the ground. You're scared to, to do, you're scared you're going to be taken down and, and go to the ground. Yeah, but I yeah. think it's too, you know, and we've talked about it off air, and, you know, we talked about it just me and you personally, and I hope you don't mind me bringing it up, but just want to be, to be involved with something that your kids oh, are involved yeah. with. Yeah. You know, uh, just as a dad, like naturally, you know, if your kids start getting into something, I can remember my dad, like anything we were into growing up, you know, me and Josh, like my dad wanted to do it. So it's kind of cool so that 
uh, a lot of the reasoning behind right. you wanting to do this uh, submission uh, format or submission tournament format is just to be more involved with the kids and what, oh, they, yeah. what they're active in. So I think that's a cool And cool I mean, the thing about it is, same with you, I mean, it gives our kids something to look forward to Absolutely. and us to work through. So, like, I know when we come in here and train with, with David and, and the rest of the guys in here and we go over and train with you guys and, and Cody and all, we're always telling them, hey, look, you got a tournament in two weeks. You've got to stay focused. You've got to train hard and all this. Mm -hmm. Well, if they know every month they got a tournament and they got to stay active, got to stay training, I feel like it's something they work for. Yeah, and then not only right. that, I think, what, after the last tournament, we said we was going to take two or three weeks off. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you do it a season and all of a sudden you give that kid a break, you know, and then let them get back after it, and all of that, I mean, kind of a reward. Hey, look, you get a break at the end of this, but, yeah. you know. And my kids kind of enjoyed I mean, they've been, still been doing the twice a week thing with mm -hmm. the wrestling, but they, they he's enjoyed not having to, to not be somewhere much. every day, yeah. yes. Kid, that's, that's something that, like, it's great for parents to put their kids in sports and activities. You got to let them be a kid and okay. let them just like, I know you're big on this, let your kids run outside. Let them, let them, let them right. not wear shoes, get them to climb trees, like learn important life lessons like that. I've seen so many really talented kids get burned out because their parents are so into the activity that their kids do and they don't just give them enough time to kind of decompress and it puts a lot of pressure on them. Yeah. I see I see that a ton in youth sports, you know, just a lot of pressure getting put on the kids. And, you know, back, you talked about seasons, you know, back when I was growing up, like, like baseball had seasons. Now right. these guys, they're on these tournament teams, like Man, they're playing year, year round. Yeah. These kids are getting burned yeah. out. So they're really good, talented kids. But by the time they get to junior high, high school, they've mm -hmm. done something so much that they don't want to do it no more. Yeah. Correct. And yeah. so having those breaks, I think, is huge. Let oh, them yeah. have fun. Let them be themselves. Mm -hmm. Let them be kids. I the issue is huge. the incentive because the incentive is you can get your college paid for. If you're doing really good, you could be a, a professional baseball player. That's right. money, money. Yeah. So, like, you obviously want that for your kids, but. It's tough as a 14 or 15 year old to grasp that. Oh, you're not paying that, attention to that. You know, yeah. no. to grasp that I, reasoning. You're just like, man, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to hang out with my friends and I want to yeah. do this and do yeah. that, you know, so. But Dude, I, I, could, I couldn't stick to any sports when I was a kid. I hated it all. If oh, I would have found jujitsu, I, I would have loved it, but I, I played everything other than football. I didn't really? like any of it. I was yeah. going to ask you. I like basketball. Was basketball was cool. Got, yeah, I got burned out on that too. Right. right. Ultimate Frisbee. That's fun too. Yeah. I, I, no, I like ultimate I frisbee. It's, it, yeah, yeah, it's, it's fun. fun. Frisbee yeah. golf and all that. That's what I was gonna say. Frisbee golf. I, that yeah. looks like it's fun. I, I always want to try that. Some of the yeah. campgrounds, like we'll go camping and stuff. Popville's got one too. Really? Popville's got a nice uh, at the PRCC. Okay. On their yeah, campus, did, yeah, they got one. Ultimate, that, ultimate frisbee is more like football, soccer, with and football. And yeah, a bunch of things mixed together. Kind of like basketball, basketball too, because of how you defend and how you guard. I mean, it's I like it. It's it's really fun, dude. It's a great workout. Yeah, and I was actually doing, doing that like once or twice a week, week until I started doing jiu jitsu. Yeah. But yeah. I, I think I think to me, honestly, my biggest thing with this tournament style thing and with my kids for one is I could teach them a basic, but I can't teach them because I'm not a ground guy. But with boxing and all of that, I feel like I'm too hard on them. And I try to show them, try to do this and all of this. I don't want that resentment from me and my son and him not to enjoy it. That's right? big. So I, I think with the, I think with the wrestling and all of that, he's got to go to somebody to learn. I think They're teaching you give him, him. You give him another. I was Malachi, maybe five, he's seven. Six. But um, I think. I'm looking after he turns 10, 11. Yeah, that's like what I'm that. saying. You start getting about around 10 or 11, I think his coordination and, and his hand eye, his hand eye coordination and everything to come together where he'll start being able to develop those boxing oh, yeah. skills a little bit better and stuff. So uh, I, I, I start teaching kids at four years old, but in my opinion, the best age is eight years old. That seems to be like this. That's the sweet spot where the kids are starting to really grasp their hand eye coordination and they're better about like honing in on something. Yeah. I don't know what it is about that it's age. It's attention but, span, yeah. too. I'm yeah. sure attention span has to develop to a certain mm -hmm. level before you can actually teach them a technique and then be able to grasp it. And, be, you know, and you got kids, they, you know, some of them progress a little faster mm -hmm. than others, I'm sure, you know, so. Uh, I, dude, there's, there's, there's a couple kids sometimes, and you'll have them put on some gloves, and you have them start hitting mitts, and you're like, have you done boxing before? And they're like, no. You're like, wow. Dude, there's, there's this. I, I can't remember his name because there's so many kids over in that Slido location that are coming in and out. There's there's a lot of kids over there. And uh, young boy, he's about six years old. I've never seen a kid be able to throw strikes like this. 
Never hit a mitt. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Y'all better. I'll, I don't know. I'll find out his name. Y'all better watch out. Y'all better watch out. If you want your kids to do MMA, watch out for that kid. He's dude. But I mean, it's, it's it's a good thing. And look at uh, what's that uh, young kid, Floyd, Floyd Burger. Yeah. I mean, that dude's a Great beast. He's going yeah. far. Yeah. And, and him and his dead, you know. What's Kurt's us? Uh, Zayden. Zayden. Yeah. Zayden. Yeah. He's a, he's a little monster. And he, yeah, we watched him at that uh, Naga tournament yeah. down in. He's a little monster. He runs ego. through him. He he, he had a really tough loss this this past weekend. Got caught with a spin back kick to the stomach. But uh, he didn't want to go down. Uh, yeah. He's he is as tough as it could get, and uh, he's in the gym whenever we're sparring and everything. He gets work in with the kids his age and everything. He's hitting the bag and like, I don't know, it's funny because it's like talking to a, just a little man because he's around like this real tough man stuff going on all the time. You never see him crack a smile much. Like he's always real serious. Yeah, you know he's got a very uh, serious demeanor about himself. So yeah, he's he'll, a cool little dude. he'll sit next to me. He'll just go like, "What's up, fatty?" I'm just like, "All right, dude. All right, okay, okay, okay." I seen him at uh, on our show last time and uh, just ran into him down the hallway. I'm like, "What's up, Zayden? How you doing, buddy?" It's like, what you got going on? He's like, I got a uh, boxing match coming up, whatever. And I'm like, well, good luck, man. He's just like, thanks. You know, he's just all real stern yeah. the whole time talking to him. So I would, another I, cool little kid. He, he's going to go for oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Man, absolutely. I was – and he's he's nice as could be. He is a very nice kid. But I remember uh, I, it was some competition, and it was after the, the matches were over, and it was all these kids, and they're all messing around grappling, and they're, like, just playing. Zayden's just slinging these kids all over the place, and they're bigger than him, him size, all that. Yeah. He's slinging them around, arm barring them, choking them, just having fun, laughing. They're laughing, and I was like, he came over. I was like, um, I was like, when? Because it was before he had a fight. I was like, when are you gonna get? In, you gonna actually get a scrap with these kids? And he was like, he was like, soon. I was like, uh, I was like, who, who, who you gonna, who you gonna run through? He said. All of them. All of them. He yeah. looked at me right now. All of them. I was yeah, like, serious. okay, bro. I was yeah, like, okay, serious. don't hurt me. Yeah. Don't hurt okay, me. That's one you don't want your kid to run into at high school. <laughs> oh, yeah, my like, God. Oh, man, please don't. Please don't yeah. hurt my kids. That's pretty that, awesome. And, and, man, I'm excited. I'm excited to see where it goes. And there's a lot of talented yeah. kids. A lot yeah. of a lot of kids coming up and stuff so like that. So you guys, y'all stay tuned. Uh, youth grappling tournaments, and I'm sure adults, which we'll probably yeah, do adults. We still got to work out some details yeah. on that, but we kind of want to throw out throw it out there. So you guys stay tuned for that. Um, what else we got coming up, Joe? Man, we got we the big, big card, Biloxi. September uh, 9th. At the Biloxi Civic Center yep. on se- September 9th. We got, got any fights uh, we can man, announce we on got that Dennis yet? LaBruza and Cove Hawkins. Cool. Uh, okay. Look, this is what I did fight. not notice about this fight, though. So I, I really didn't want the fight to happen. We went back and forth about it. They got on Facebook, and it kind of became a feud mm-hmm. between them, whatever. But they actually both have the same records. Their only loss in bare knuckle is to Duke. Ah. Their only loss in MMA is one MMA loss. You know, and so looking at it, they got they both got tons of knockouts. Uh, it's going to be a heated fight, without a doubt. I didn't I didn't see it. Until I started going back, sitting down, like, all right, does this make sense and all of that? And it's a savage boxing match, four ounce gloves, bare knuckle rules. Main event, right? Main event, pretty, so main, pretty exciting. Yeah, so September 9th, main event, um, Biloxi Civic Center, Dennis LaBruza taking on Cub Hawk and Savage right. Boxing Rules. We got to uh, scrap and You got to get your tickets now, honestly. Absolutely. Because, like, if Dennis absolutely. fights, you really actually, like, everyone says, get your tickets now. For, no, really, actually, get your tickets now. You won't have a seat. He's going to sell that. They got Johnny's fighting no tool. And Absolutely. a savage kickboxing, our first ever savage kickboxing, which is four ounce gloves, M- uh, Muay Thai rules. I'm excited about and, that. Uh, it's going to be very So it's kind of cool because, uh, you know, Johnny always helps out with the commentary and stuff. I'm y'all got to have me replace him. That's what y'all got. Yeah, you in? Well, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. You in? That's yeah. what I'm talking yeah. about, dude. Yeah. Awesome. You're in. You're yeah. Fired. I show Johnny how to fight every week. I'm going to show him how to commentate, <laughs> too. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think he was making some comments about you being a skinny something on the Yes, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I might really be a skinny scum, bastard, dude. <laughs> you yeah. think I am. I'm, I'm big, dude. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes I worry I'm too big. Up. Yeah, so uh, Johnny Smith, so it was cool because the last card, he actually was just sitting there, and we were just kind of talking and stuff in between fights, and he's like, man, I want to do a savage kid boxing fight. And we got to, I was like, that'd be cool, man. That'd be cool. And then next thing I know, you know, he he, he uh, signed up for the O'Toole fight. So he wanted oh, to be yeah. O'Toole fight. Dude, it's since, gonna since, be interesting. since Joe even mentioned all this, because all this started was a dream and a conversation, right? Oh, yeah. You just, just something yeah. you, you were just dreaming about. You, you've been daydreaming about it, thinking about it. You talked to me about it, you talked with them, and they were like, 
I really want to do Savage Boxing. As soon as you told me that, I was like, dude, Savage Muay Thai too, Savage, like, there's so much, dude, dude, dude. that's going to be the most fun stuff to watch yeah. is guys with the MMA gloves on, doing Muay Thai rules, elbows, knees, kicks, right? Uh, yeah, yep, yeah. elbows and everything, dude. Must be pro for Savage Box and Must. Savage uh, Muay Thai. Yes. Yeah, yeah. which, which is rightfully so. It's gonna be it's gonna be dangerous, but that's that's the that's the fun part about it. You know, um, you're really gonna see guys like Skills actually shine. See what see see who like has the best style for an all around fight, the self defense situation, MMA fight. Because in kickboxing and in Muay Thai, the only thing is like it's unrealistic because. My hand's this big right now, y'all. When I put that glove on, it's oh, this yeah. big. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could block my face like this. And you do this you in really MMA, clinch. you're getting smoked. Yeah, right. and how can you really clinch? You know, uh, yes, with, with the big gloves on and all of that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty It's pretty hard so, to do. I'm I'm excited to see what happens. This is going to be the first one we've done. Yeah. Um, we're, we're still trying to match one more uh, Savage Boxer match. And uh, we, we got some other fights already signed. We can't announce it. Um, and uh, pretty exciting. I mean, it's a pretty stacked card uh, mm -hmm. on the pro side. And, yeah, and, so uh, just those couple of fights alone, though, that's a card that you want to get in yep. on, man. That's a card it's... that you want to check it out. And and not only do, uh, do we have great fights, now we got a great member of our commentary team and David Gordon. I forgot Wilson. Johnny was – I knew he was fighting the Savage Box Rules. I don't know why I forgot about that. I was I was going to I was gonna hardball, y'all. Yeah. I was like, y'all was like, get, get Johnny off. Y'all yeah, get yeah, – no, I'm yeah, joking. Yeah. So I love be, you, Johnny. It's going to be a fun card. Uh, a lot of fun fights. So Y'all stay tuned. Stay on our uh, social media. Uh, we'll be posting up some more fight updates coming up as, as we get them uh, con uh, confirmed. Uh, you going to be hit BFC tonight, right? Yeah, that should be a good show. Couple too. good, couple I mean, tough yeah. guys. Uh, ben Blue and he's actually I think he's fighting Devin. tonight. He's fighting Davin Scott. Yeah, uh, should be a good fight. O'Toole, he's fighting. Uh, Man, somebody like twenty. Yeah, Junior Moreno. Six and I hope 12. I pronounced that right. Yeah, he's fighting. Very, very tough guy. I've adult. just been hearing about him. Yeah, he's from Mid City. I guess he's from Brazil, and he had like really extensive professional record over there. Yeah. He's twenty six so. and twelve, I believe, uh, is what his record was. I looked it up earlier. O'Toole coming in. Um, a little uh, on paper, I guess it don't look even, but we know yeah. O'Toole, he's a tough, tough dude. That's he likes to scrap. Yeah, it's, it's dude, and all Ray guys over there like to throw down. I mean, there's I don't think down. anybody that comes out of that gym ain't a scrapper, yeah. man. They all they all throw down. So I'm worried about, that, about y'all's y'all's mental, mental well being over there. Y'all are all crazy, <laughs> dude. dude. Oh, Ray, 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 Ray is screaming on the top of his lungs. The energy that I see in the in the videos and stuff when they train and whenever they fight, it's a uh, it's awesome. Well, it's to watch. I love watching. Doing the Absolutely, it's incredible, it's, man. When you went in, uh, I mean, they had like death matches. It looked like to me, like. We were sitting there, and, and Ray's like, "Kill him, yeah. f him up, kill him." <laughs> they try to move camera yeah. equipment so it didn't get oh, right. Yeah, they didn't man. care. They just yeah, it was throw intense. It love it, dude. It was intense. He had some one-on-one -on -one fights going on while we were sitting there waiting to do the interviews. And oh man, these Ryan O'Toole's the man, dude. Like, does not care. I think so. Yeah, uh, I've seen uh, O'Toole compete as an exhibition. Like, I've seen him come show up to a fight, kickbox at the last minute. I've seen him uh, grapple uh, Yaya that one time on the Empire. Well, last I will minute. say. I mean, I've seen him take more fights. Oh, yeah. As when like he got on the short, short notice. Than, yeah, than he has, you know, scheduled fights. A lot of people think he's overrated, and I'm about, we're about to see it. Yeah. I mean, if he is or isn't. Well, he's a got lot a huge of people test. Think he's, he's got a huge test, not only oh, yeah. in junior, but also with Johnny Smith. With Johnny, Johnny Smith's Smith. legit, man. What's he, yeah. three Johnny's or four got legit no? skills. Yeah, I think he's 3-0 and oh as a professional. Uh, or, MMA fighter? Yeah, 3 uh, or 4 and oh. But he fights in July as well over on uh, Peak mm -hmm. Fight Championship, which yeah. ought to be a good show. And, and, and Johnny's a great all-around fighter, yes. but, but what you see in the cage a lot is wrestling and ground and pound and grappling, but he's a very good kickboxer. It's just That's just how that's just how the fights go sometimes. Right. Now, now that it's all striking, you're going to get to see Johnny's skill set, how good of a kickboxer he is, how good his kicks are, how good his hands are, head movement, all that. Man, you get and Ryan O'Toole. Yes, knees, knees, elbows, clinches. Yeah. I mean, you talk about O'Toole being. What I like about it, I'm sorry to interrupt. That's okay. Is they're both crazy people. <laughs> they're both crazy people. I don't know Ryan that well, but I've had a couple conversations with him. He is like. You know, that's that's like Ray's boy. Like him and Duke, they're family. They're they're like this. So you got to be crazy if you're hanging out with Ray all the time. Yeah. You're right. So yeah, Johnny and Ray. That's that seems like two madmen about a fight, and that is probably the most exciting fight 
well, that's in this whole area coming we up. Were, Other than the Bruiser fight, but I mean, how can you not be excited right, for yeah. his anytime, fight? Man, that's anytime going. Dennis fight, that's going to be exciting. And you know, people are mixed feelings on it on that fight. On who's going to win, where's it going to go, and, and yeah. all of that. So I've had a lot of messages, a lot of, you know, this is probably the toughest fight I think besides Duke that Dennis had. Um, I think so. I he think he moves around a lot. He's yeah. he's very in and out. But but I do gotta say, Dennis is putting in the work. Dennis is you know. He's, he's had a lot of man. fights as an amateur and as a pro. Both, Both of them had a good bit of fights, but mm -hmm. oh yeah. In you know the was what's it called the Sugar Burt boxing. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dennis is a couple time champion in that, right? Yeah, like yeah. Golden Glove boxer. Yeah, he's yep. won that. No one ever really talks about that, but the dude is. Everyone thinks he's a brawler, and he just throws a right hand. Like no, he actually knows how to box. He is a boxer. Yeah, he's, he's, good he's, working he's got good head movement. I've always boxers. been impressed with you know Dennis in the gym because. He's not really been, he hasn't really been training that, you know, long. that long. He's only been training for maybe three or four years. Mm -hmm. Like what he's done in that three or four year span and how he's grown skill wise. And like you said, you know, he's got legit boxing skills. When we're in the gym, like his footwork and like when he's really trying to focus on just movement and, and constantly movement, getting like, better. Yeah, you can't. There's times in the gym where like, you know, right before the fight, I mean, he was in the back in our, in the, uh, yeah. when we was getting warmed up for the boxing match. Like, I would, you know, I was just kind of messing around, but, like, I couldn't touch him. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, and it gets like that in the gym where, like, I'm really trying to punch him in the face and, like, I can't <laughs> touch him. Like, he's his yeah. head movement, it gets so sharp and his his focus and his head, his hand-eye coordination gets so dialed in that you can't touch him in the gym sometimes. It's all about these. Absolutely. He's, he's got, got those. those. He's, he's got, got those. He's got those eyes, eyes man. Yep. And that's he's that's got, what it seems. And, and the <laughs> thing about it, he's got heart that you can't teach. And not only that is when he has an actual fight lined up, that dude's going two, three His times a day. day. Mm -hmm. yes. He's spending uh, nonstop driving all over training with all kinds of different What time guys. did he text us this morning? Uh, yeah, it was like, probably like 8, 7, 8 yeah. o'clock, and he already he was done with his first session. By already 7, went to the gym. I mean, he's he going was, over to train with Duke and him uh, this weekend. Yeah, he's got a training session set up for uh, Saturday and Sunday. You know, I mean, he's sure all over the place. he'll be a gold place. dragon this afternoon, uh, sparring or hitting pads. And I'm going to go he's, ahead and say, you know, I, I've said it for the longest time. I think, honestly, if somebody's into boxing, somebody's into – and to get in and work in some of the best training is Blake Singlin. I, I honestly think that's the best boxing coach around down here. And, and that's what finally, you know, Dennis is going to do. And, and some of that, I'm, I'm excited to see what, what comes of it. Because, like, I, I, I've said it for a long time. I think that's – Blake is – shout out hey, to Blake, one coach. of the best yep. uh, boxing coaches around. And even watching him fight, you know, back in the day, I mean, it was – I enjoyed watching him fight. Yeah, he was a scrappy dude. He was scrappy. Super he scrappy put on dude. a good show, you know. Um, and and I'm interested to see what what changes in uh, Dennis's fight game and all of that. Absolutely. You know? So and I, I know y'all spar a good bit and go back and forth, so y'all see it. But I'm I'm interested in yeah, and seeing so, uh, it. Dude, so a lot of big things. What you got, Dave? I already know if if he's going over to train with, with Blake Singley. <clears throat> Josh, Josh May was definitely asking him for rounds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just thinking, I was like, God, could you imagine if you had Dennis LeBruce with Josh Mayo and Gage Gill in one room? That's, that's a lot of testosterone. That's a lot of testosterone. <laughs> a lot of testosterone that's, going up in that moment. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure if any's IQ would, would raise, but your fight, I, your fight IQ would raise. I don't know about on paper IQ, but God bless. Right. Those are some, some tough, gritty dudes who just love to fight at the end of the day. I, I love that. I love that that raw, primal, whatever that is that some, some dudes just have. You could just see it on them. You could smell it on them. It's awesome to see. It was Man. funny talking about Dennis. Uh, I was teaching jujitsu last night. at Y'all don't Dragon. beat me up. I feel like I'm, gonna get I'm just talking <laughs> shit. I was, I was teaching uh, jujitsu last night at Gold Dragon, and, and I'm showing a technique, and we had a guy – I, it was my first time meeting there. I think he had only had a couple <laughs> sessions there, you know, previously. So, you know, he's relatively a new guy, third, fourth class. And, and I, I go over there and I'm showing him a technique and he looks right at me. He's like, man, you must be Labruza. And I'm like, man, if you put about 80 pounds of muscle on my frame, maybe. <laughs> yeah, just, That's it was funny. funny. I was like, nah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm not Labruza. I'm not <laughs> Labruza. So, but anyways, yeah. big things coming up. You guys stay tuned. We'll have some big fights announced for us September 9th. Yeah, we um, got more coming up. Yep. And, um. Uh, and I will say this, we're, we're super excited to see where this uh, <laughs> jiu-jitsu tournament goes, super excited to see where the future of Savage Fight goes. We're looking at next year, hopefully to get out of this, you know, out of the state of Mississippi, travel a little bit more, mm -hmm. um, go to a few other states, um, and pretty excited about that. Uh, this will be our first uh, pay-per-view card. I think our camera guys got everything figured out. 
Um, everything will be on pay-per-view this time. We do have an undercard uh, that you could watch on Facebook, maybe, I think. Um, that'll be shown on Facebook, the undercard, but to watch these bigger uh, pro fights and all of that, that'll be on pay-per-view. Uh, man, we've been blessed. God is definitely moving us in the right direction, definitely blessing us and allowing us to be able to get better things going. Uh, and obviously bring on some uh, some more guys and uh, be able to make things happen together. I'm pretty excited to see what happens and Me too. where just, it goes. Just, just, just wait and see where everything's going to be in three years from now. It's going to be really exciting. I'm always thinking about that. What's three to five years looking like? Well, I'm hoping awesome. first of next year. It's going to look like David Gordon and the Hitman Tyler Hill fighting. That'd be uh, sick. With a savage yeah. belt. Absolutely. That'd be sick. So, but, uh, just saying, that's what I'm hoping for. Nah, like. that'd be sick. Um, eventually, it's going to happen either way, though. That's, that's just what I think. So you're you saying know, it needs to happen sooner than later? I don't think so it'll happen sooner. I'm down for it to be sooner, but I, don't, I, think, he, I think he called someone, tell me he called someone out, like a good guy, something yeah, like that. So yeah. he's... I'm not, I'm not trying, trying to be a bully to my man, so, so you gonna have you got you got a couple chickens uh, you gotta you gotta worry about right now. So he's gonna have to deal with that guy, get past that test, come out unscathed, and uh, accept the fight with me. If not, it will happen eventually. It ain't, it ain't. Look, I want to see that fight happen. I want to see it made. I like Tyler. Shout out to Tyler Hill. Uh, he does some uh, YouTube videos, does some different, uh, I think TikToks and stuff like that. I've watched some of them and actually enjoy them. Um, so shout out to Tyler. What does he do? He makes like recipes, recipes or you... yeah, like, yeah cooking stuff. <laughs> no, he does like yeah. uh, like the one I watched where it goes around and it was actually pretty neat. Uh, he was showing how to make money. Uh, just you could pretty much make money doing anything. Like mm -hmm. he cleaned out trash cans for people and went around and said, "All right, well, I'm gonna make a hundred dollars and." I think 24 hours and went around cleaning trash oh, cans. Cool. I mean, seen the trash can. I think he, I seen the trash can. He one. does. He does cool stuff. I mean, it's neat to watch. I seen the trash. If y'all haven't seen Tyler Hill's videos, <laughs> watch them. They're pretty awesome. Uh, awesome. But I do. Hey, but a side note, I do want to see you fight, David. Yeah, David. I'd like to see David recipes. 20. What kind of recipes you got, dude? What kind <laughs> look, of recipes? We'll stack up recipes. Look, David, David's yeah, on yeah. that fatty side. He's, he he said I ain't fighting right now. I just want to eat. So, <laughs> nah, dude, I'm walking around 145 pounds right now. Yeah. No, not well, really. Add a, few pounds, add a few pounds. So we're going to close it out. Thank David Gordon for uh, letting us use his gym for today's podcast. Hopefully we can get together in a couple weeks after we get some more yeah. of the, uh, the yeah. uh, tournament, submission tournament stuff, the grappling tournament mm -hmm. stuff figured out. Uh, maybe we can all sit down and, and have another podcast, mm -hmm. kind of talk about that. Maybe bring in Cody if he's got a chance to come. And shout out to Cody. Cody's got them uh, classes yeah, going Cappy, on at Gold Dragon. Uh, Look if him you up got something, your kids, you know, you want to get your kids in some training this summer. Uh, he's been doing some privates over at Gold Dragon. Uh, he's also, I, I think I mentioned earlier, talking about doing like a wrestling camp or something. So mm -hmm. y'all yeah. stay, y'all stay in touch with Cody Kathy for that kind of stuff. Um, again, get your tickets now, September 9th. Biloxi Civic Center. We haven't put the we we sit down with the Civic Center. We're trying to uh relay out the floor plan because okay. there's kind of too many uh, too many people want tickets and we got to readjust the okay cool the floor so to lay we'll out. Get that so figured out. Too so many people want tickets. That well, means you need yeah, to get your tickets now. now. Got, you need to get, get your get tickets now. now. We got a good bit of people hitting us up <clears> and, going, and a lot of people wanting close to the cage and all that. So we're gonna put some VIP seating and stuff like yeah. that and change it up. Nice. Bring, Bring your raincoats. Coats. There's gonna be blood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's so going to be wild. Thank so, you, David Gordon. Thank you, man. Come I check appreciate him out. Team, team Juke thank out. Picky Highway it, 11. 107 Highway 11 South. Come check him out. Joey Ford, thank you for letting man, us do we this appreciate again, it. brother. Check us out, man.